good, everybody, and welcome to the premiere episode of Realms of the Wild. This is our official, uh, not official, kind of, but it's from Zelda Universe, so this is kind of official. Uh, Breath of the Wild uh, tabletop RPG. Uh, we are using the Open Legends system uh, because it's awesome. Uh, we are sponsored by neither Open Legends or Nintendo. We are just doing this because we love Zelda so much and thought it might be fun. Um, I do want to start off our premiere episode with a slight disclaimer. Uh, my name is Trainer Jody, by the way. Um, I am all over the internet. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I stream on my own channel, things like that. Uh, if you are not familiar with me, you will get familiar with me very quickly uh, because I'm the dude that will be doing all the funny voices for everyone else. Um, uh, slight disclaimer for this show. Um, this show is set in the Breath of the Wild universe, but in order to give the uh, players and their characters the ability to make meaningful decisions and really decide their own fate, um, we are, uh, this game is going to be its own canon. Uh, so please do not get into arguments in the Twitch chat about, uh, you know, whether or not we're doing something that is somehow going to break canon. We are in a separate canon. Um, uh, the game itself is set in the time period between the Great Calamity and Link waking up. So Link's asleep, Zelda's doing other stuff, Ganon's doing other stuff. Uh, this is a story about four characters that get involved in something much, much bigger than them. And they have to figure out how they want to deal with it based on their own motivations, based on their, their own ideas, their own feelings. Um, and so we, uh, the story itself, while I have written an overarching plot type thing, um, the story itself is going to be entirely dependent on what the players choose. I am a, a huge advocate on this is their story, and I am simply here to make sure that the story keeps going. Um, uh, uh, the uh, other thing uh, that uh, we're doing, um, we are uh, using the Breath of the Wild world as kind of a template. So you will hear familiar things like Elden and Mount uh, Lenneryu, <laughs> which I've never been able to pronounce that. Um, however, um, video game worlds are not like real living, breathing worlds. I mean, have you ever seen a toilet in Hyrule Castle Town? Um, yes. That's what I'm saying here. Um, so we will be kind of expanding the world. Some of the villages will be larger than they appear in the game themselves, just so that we can pretend that they are a real self-sufficient village and things like that. So when you hear weird things, um, that's because I've added to the lore, I've added to specific things because uh, I want this to feel like a real living, breathing world. Um, the final thing I want to tell you guys, um, <clears throat> We, uh, me and uh, the other producers of this show are working on ways for you guys to be able to interact with the show um, more directly. We don't have anything today. This is our first episode. I wanted it to really focus on the characters themselves. Um, but as the show goes on, we are going to have uh, ways for you guys to interact live during the show. We may have ways for you guys to interact uh, when we are not. Uh, running this show through like uh, social media and things like that all those things are very important to us because you guys the fans the people that are watching right now you guys are the ones that are going to keep the show on the air you guys are the ones that are uh, going to uh, give us kind of the energy we need to keep on going because there's going to be rough spots in the show there's going to be character turmoil and things like that and uh, this is really ungodly early for uh, most of the cast so, um, uh, Wait, really? yes. What? I hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I call it the return of Saturday morning cartoons, where cartoons are, are RPGs played by real people. Um, uh, other, uh, some, some slight, uh, just, uh, announcement type stuff. Um, this uh, We will stream this every other week. We will have a new episode. It's always going to be same time, same place right here. Uh, so please uh, follow the channel. Um, subscribe to the channel if you'd like uh, to help support um, Zelda Universe in all the Twitch program they do, all of the YouTube programming that they do. They do a lot of different stuff. It actually costs them money to do it. Um, so if you subscribe, you, you are physically helping 
uh, this Zelda fan site uh, keep doing the stuff that they do. Right now they pay for most of it out of pocket. So um, on the weeks we are not showing, uh, we are not streaming a live game, we will actually be uh, rebroadcasting this game uh, at the same time. So if you miss it, you can actually watch it right there. Um, after we rebroadcast it, it will go up on the VODs. You can watch that, subscribe or not. Um, VODs are open to everybody. Um, and we will be uploading it to the YouTube channel. So if you are a YouTube aficionado that you just prefer YouTube, head over to YouTube, check it out there. You can comment there, you know, do stuff like that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, all that stuff. So I believe that takes care of all of my pre-show announcements. Um, does anyone, uh, uh, any one of you guys have uh, any announcements that you need to make before we get into the nitty gritty of this show? I would just like to announce uh, who, who we are. <laughs> yeah, I probably should. That was going to be oh, the next part. Oh. So, uh, like I said before, I, uh, I have trained Jody. I am the games master for this game. Um, <laughs> I am going to start. I don't know how it is on the stream right now because it's on a different window. Uh, uh, character reveal order. On my left. Character reveal uh, order. Character reveal order. Okay. Well, now I just switched over. Um, I'm going to start <laughs> off with uh, the um, uh, <laughs> the always more than mediocre Elias. Oh. Um, Elias, who are you? Ooh, time and place. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, well, my name is Elias Thompson. I'm the Twitch director here at Zelda Universe, and. Uh, I play a character. You'll see. Okay. Um, it's already been revealed. <laughs> I play a very mysterious character. You don't know their name. You don't know their race. You don't know anything. Your name. Please tell me your character's name and as much information as you're willing to give in about 30 seconds. Okay. So. All right. Uh, yeah, I play a Goron named Iruna. Bomb specialist. Loves bombs. Loves eating rocks. Uh, super dependable guy. Brutally honest. Um, and he is out to see the world. Awesome. Uh, next, uh, next to him on your screens, uh, is, uh, the amazing and illustrious, uh, Ilea, uh, Miriam Pig. Um, Ilea, introduce yourself. Hi. <laughs> I'm Ilea. I go by Green Eye Trombonist on the interweb things. I'm playing Zolta the Zora today, and she doesn't have the butt she's a pretty fun person i think so that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> awesome um <coughs> next to her uh is the um always curious amazingly awesome kiri calligan hello my name is kiri and i play a shika named kestrel in a world that's not too uh, happy with Shika right now, so I've kind of got a constant target on my back, but I need to uncover the secrets of my people, because we can't forget, guys. We can't forget. Uh. And finally, uh, we have the always en uh, entertaining and uh, a very uh, apparently very uh, recognizably voiced uh, <laughs> Alex Rosenberg. <laughs> Uh, Alex. <laughs> I am nothing if not consistent. Hi, I'm Alex. I am the media director here at Zelda Universe. I am playing a character known as Pierre, who is a Rito, of the world with his accordion, uh, singing songs, drinking lots of wine, hanging out with some ladies, um, and just all that stuff. Uh, just don't make sure, make sure he keeps playing. Just make sure he keeps playing. I can't end do that. Without thinking of Eddie Izzard and his whole thing about French people in films. I am Pierre! <laughs> the, funny thing, the funny thing is that the character Pierre came from a show that I interviewed a guy for, for ZU. So all kind of, it's all circular. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we just, um, as, as creatives, we are constantly just stealing things from each other. Uh, ideas, thoughts, um, you know. I'll eventually be coming up, uh, uh, you know, with a book that retells, you know, Alice in Wonderland in this cool, amazing, um, <laughs> as, Kira, as Kira gives, looks, at da looks at me with daggers. I mean, uh, Kira's a published fine, author, by the way, guys. Fine, fine. <laughs> Episode two, we have a new GM. <laughs> what happened to him? Copyright lawyer. Anyway, um, <laughs> to get us started, let me uh, introduce uh, you guys to the world. Um, uh, this world is set during, uh, the hundred years period between the Great Calamity and Link, uh, waking up in the Shrine of Resurrection, uh, at the beginning of Breath of the Wild. Uh, in the game itself, 
Very little is said about this time period. It's one of the reasons that we've uh, kind of chosen this. Um, but for those of you Zelda people that have never played Breath of the Wild but are familiar with Zelda itself, Breath of the Wild is set tens of thousands of years in the future of any of the other games. Uh, Ganon himself uh, has foregone uh, his ability to um, kind of physically manifest and has become this force known as Calamity Ganon. Um, and um, roughly 20-ish years before the show started, the Great Calamity happened. Uh, 10,000 years ago, they decided, you know what, we're really sick of this Ganon guy coming back every you know, 100 years like Dracula in Castlevania. So we're going to fix him. And the plot to fix him worked relatively well. But 10,000 years later, um, the leader of the realm decided... Um, and realized that he was going to come back. So they're like, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They tried it again, and Calamity Ganon corrupted their method of attempting to um, uh, trap him, and the Great Calamity happened. Uh, Hyrule itself was devastated. There were, we're going to say in our world, there were millions of people living in Hyrule, uh, and um, hundreds of thousands of people died during the calamity it was this horrible event we are now living in a post-apocalyptic style um as we get rid of alex for some odd reason <laughs> tech issues are awesome we guys. tried yeah we, uh, we were living in a post-apocalyptic uh uh version of high rule um so that's all the background you're really going to get for right now um, the rest is going to be told by characters and everything like that. Every character does have their own backgrounds, their own secrets, things like that. Uh, so you guys will discover them as we go. So, starting things off. Kestrel. Yes. You've been wandering around for a little bit. You've had this strange feeling that there's something wrong in the world. Some, something is not quite right like but Alex someone is missing in my life. <laughs> we swear we tested this, guys. Um, <laughs> um, for a while, you've been feeling that, that something is wrong in the world. Um, over the past few weeks, this feeling has gone from happening every so often to constant. And so you decided to venture forth um, from your home village of Kakariko Village um, in order to find out what was going on um now um you are aware that uh in this world um uh being a shika itself is a crime punishable by torture and death um, you don't agree with it um but that's just how it is you've hidden uh, you've hidden your heritage pretty well for a while living in kakariko village um but setting out you have uh um, setting out, uh, you have been doing your best to avoid uh, what are called the Shadow Stalkers. These are groups of people who make the entirety of their living hunting down uh, Shika, hunting down um, River Zora, anyone that can be linked with Ganon in some way, shape, or form. Uh, they bring them to large cities and then basically collect bounties on them. Uh, and generally, if you're captured by these Shadow uh, Stalkers, um, which is what they call themselves, um, and they get you to a large city, your life uh, ends uh, relatively quickly and relatively painfully. So um, you've been getting this very strong pull from Hyrule Field. For some reason, you know, you can't say why, you can't tell how, but you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the reason the world is wrong is going to make sense in Hyrule Field. And okay. so as you get to Hyrule Field, you're met with a very familiar sight. Um, it is this lush, almost ocean of long, tall, green grass, hills every so often, a tree or a rock every so often. But it's a beautiful plain. Um, and uh, as you're kind of overwhelmed with the beauty of it, uh, you start again, you feel this feeling is, is massively strong, incredibly strong. You can tell that just it, it must be just over. You see a hill um, probably about 100 feet away from you, and you think just over that hill 
just over that hill, I'm going to figure out what's wrong. I know it. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that's going to happen. And as you are sitting there, you hear a very familiar sound that you've heard before, though never directed at you. The air crackles. You smell um, uh, the smell of like ozone in the air and your reflexes are the only things that save you. You look over, you see a rock about 20 feet away and you take out your trusty hookshot, point it at it yeah, and fly past as this web of lightning energy shoots past. You look behind you to see four shadow stalkers preparing their weapons, one oh, of shit. which uh, has just finished casting a spell. Um, the other three uh, are sitting there. Uh, one of them is uh, much further back, kind of up in a tree a little bit. She uh, has a bow and arrow kind of levied at you. You see another one who just has this massive axe and looks like a wall of muscle, and he's just grunting there. Um, you <laughs> see uh, the fourth one is sitting there with a set of daggers, just kind of flipping them uh, in his hand, going, so... <laughs> Looks like this blood eye is going to give us a little bit of trouble. All right, fellas. Looks like we work for our dinner tonight. What would you like to do? Not be here? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> makes sense. Wish! <laughs> Wish me away! <laughs> um, shoot, okay. Mm. Around you right now, like I said, when you kind of... Um, it's like the plains. There's not a lot here, is there? Yeah. There is a there is a large hill. You're about 60 feet away from, from the top of it, and you can't see what's on the other side of it. It looks, from where you are, it looks like the hill goes up to about 30-foot height uh, and then has kind of a sheer drop. Um, so it's not like this massive mountain or anything like that. Um but the sheer drop itself is, you know, it's 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 a drop. Other um, than that, there is long grass. It's about waist high uh, for most people. Um, I actually can't remember how tall you said your character is. Um, she's not the tallest, but she's so not yeah, right. probably about you know waist chest high uh, to you. Uh, uh, we will keep Alex <laughs> here eventually. I mean, it's fine. I'm just going to die in like the next five seconds. It's cool. <laughs> so um, um, knowing that information, how far away from you me? Are, what would you like to do? How far away from me are they? Uh, they are uh, the furthest one away is about like 120 ish. Well, feet. him, I'm not so worried about as much. I'm more worried about the close people. Uh, the rest of them are roughly her, her. about like um, uh, the ones with melee weapons are about uh, 60 feet away. Uh, the caster seems to be uh, a little bit further away at about 70 or 80 feet away. And the one with the bow and arrow is like 100 feet away. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. So as you're sitting there, uh, it looks like the caster is preparing another spell as you try and contemplate what it is that you're going to do. You don't have anything else to latch onto with the hook shot right now. Yeah. So the likelihood of you being able to avoid that specific attack twice in the same way is very, very low. So what would you like to do? Um, let's see, it's up to like waste. Hmm. Guess I can't really run bent over again. <laughs> You can you can try the Naruto run if you want to try that. Yeah, I want to try the Naruto run. Show okay. Show my ancestors and run for that freaking um, <laughs> that hill. Uh, <laughs> so uh, due to your specific character makeup, um, I'm gonna have you make uh, what I would normally have you make is an agility check uh, to see how stealthily you can get through here. Um, however. Um, you are uh, a very um, intuitive type person. Yes. Um, and so I'm going to have you make a logic check. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have you make a logic check to see if you can find the areas where you might actually be able to move quickly while Since being. I also have a feat of untrackable. Will that mm -hmm. be useful here? Probably not. Um, due to the <laughs> fact that they don't actually have to track you, they can physically see I you. Know. I know. I was hoping. <laughs> It's no, I'm, I'm in the grass. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong, but... Yes, no, okay. No advantages then. All right. So uh, yeah, I'm going to make this... Uh, technically, uh, I'm going to give you disadvantage... Uh, Dang it! No! Disadvantage one on this. 
Why did um, I speak? <laughs> just because uh, it is going to be a little bit hard. These guys, their entire purpose is to track people like you. Um, and they have methods that you are unaware of in order to do that. So you're going to have disadvantage one. 15. Uh, 15 is good. 15 is good. So you duck down and you start uh, running away. You hear, uh, again, the, the sound of crackling air. Uh, you feel some, some heat and your hair stands on end a little bit as another web of lightning as I smack my pop filter. Wow, that was cool. Um, uh, uh, goes past you. Um, but for the time being, it seems to be that uh, they cannot physically see you. You do hear <laughs> huge lumbering steps coming in your general direction. Um, what direction are you heading now that you are technically kind of hidden? The, the hill. Okay. I would like to try to get up and over it, but we'll see if that's... All right, so you start going. You do realize that about halfway up the hill, you're going to lose your cover. Um, so your movement ends right where you would start to lose your cover. Um, uh, while Star this is Wars happening... Star Wars has taught me that that means I have the, I have the higher ground, so I win, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, just take out your <laughs> lightsaber, and as they do their force jump <laughs> over top, of you cut off three of their limbs, Sweet. and you win. Okay, cool. I got it. All right. Um, because that's how it really works, guys. That's how it really <laughs> works. Um, while all this is okay. happening, Zulta, you, uh, have an interesting past. Um, you've le recently left one of the giant underwater cities that the Zora still control. Since the Great Calamity, um, the Zora, before the Great Calamity, uh, had become a major power due to their control of magic in general. They were one of the most magically inclined people. Um, they basically were the rulers of Hyrule um, for a time. And they actually used their magic to flood uh, additional parts of Hyrule so they could spread their influence um, even further. When the Great Calamity happened, they came to the decision that, you know what? Uh, the rest of the races can deal with this. Uh, it's not our fault that it didn't work. Uh, they screwed up. They can fix it. And they retreated to their giant underwater cities in the various seas and oceans around uh, Hyrule. Um, you have recently left one of those cities. Um, again, having a very familiar, um, a familiar sounding to the audience experience. Something is wrong in the world. The world doesn't seem right. And your entire life, you would get this feeling that something is wrong. The world doesn't seem right. And you can never explain why. But the last couple of weeks, it's been constant. It's been intense, and it's been directional. You know Hyrule Field, there, something is there. You don't know what, but you know that there's an answer there. And so you've been traveling towards Hyrule Field, um, <coughs> doing your best to conceal yourself, because being a Zora, there's technically no physical difference between a Sea Zora and a River Zora. The only difference being the River Zora serve Ganon and the Sea Zora serve the king. And you've seen families ripped apart by accusations that one of their family members were a River Zora. Despite no evidence being presented, there's such a terror and fear of Ganon's influence that uh, it's a very common thing. And you know that... Um, it's very possible with you being outside one of the cities, you could be tracked by a group of shadow stalkers. So you have uh, actually been monitoring a group that has been tracking you uh, for the past week or so, and you've been just barely a step ahead of them every single time. You finally got to the edge of the woods before reaching, um, uh, before reaching Hyrule Field, and um, you... Uh, again, knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's an answer and it's not that further away. You, you think it can't be more than a couple hundred feet away from your very position right then. But you suddenly see in front of you um, something that you've never physically seen before. Um, you've seen uh, other races come and trade with the Zora, um, but one thing you've never seen because they've been hunted basically to extinction is a Chica. Um, and in front of you is this woman with shock white hair and red eyes very characteristic of shika and you see the group of shadow stalkers that have been tracking you for over a week all converging upon her you see her use some sort of device to move rapidly 
across the field right as they launch a net of electric energy that you've seen them use before that would have disabled her so that they could take her back to the nearest Zora city uh, and collect their bounty. Um, you see her dive into the long grass and start going as another one of these nets goes. And you can see the mage uh, uh, himself sitting there. And instead of this crackling kind of black lightning that they tend to use when they trap uh, people, uh, you see his hands start to steam. And then you start seeing smoke rise from them. And you smell the hints of um of fire and you see a ball of fire begin to form in his hands um and as you see that something else catches your eye you're looking at the hill uh there's a uh, there's a hill um roughly um about 150 feet from your position um and at the top of the hill something seems weird Uh oh. <clears throat> you know, guys. Yes. There we go. Something seems <laughs> weird. All right, so we should all be back. <laughs> uh, hello, audience. Uh, this app was a lot more solid uh, before we started running this game. So. <laughs> Um, so, um, what you see in the distance, um, is, uh, you see at the top of this hill, something weird. It looks almost like there's, um, translucent cloth that's just hanging in the air that has been bunched and wrung out. And it looks bizarre, but you, this, this pulling you've been feeling for weeks, that's where it's coming from. That, that point right there is where it's coming from. Um, so seeing the four shadow stalkers with one of them barely 30 feet away from you, you don't know how she didn't notice you because she's up in a tree just like you are. She's just a little bit further away and she's got two arrows knocked. Um, which is an interesting thing. You've never seen someone fire two arrows at the same time. Um, uh, so knowing that information, knowing where you are, what would you like to do? Uh, are they following the um, stalkers on the ground? Are they following the Sheikah? Yes, uh, the two uh, ones with melee weapons. There's a guy. There's this really big guy. He's like um, like six and a half, seven, almost seven feet tall. Much, much, much larger than any Zora you've seen, um, aside from the king himself. Um, and um, uh, he has this massive axe and he's just lumbering forward. You can feel every step he takes actually shakes, sh uh, shakes your tree a little bit. Um, and then there is a much shorter uh, humanoid uh, with a pair of daggers that just dashed forward faster than you've seen anyone ever move before. Um, incredibly fast, running towards the last position that this Shika was. She's kind of disappeared under the grass. And because of the wind and everything moving the grass around, um, it's very hard to see movement in there. Um, and then, like I said, the, uh, the one that cast the spell before has now created a ball of fire in his hands, and the one with the bow has knocked arrows and seems to be just waiting, waiting for something. Maybe and a cat to show up. And they created a monster. <laughs> Go that way. Um, so I want to kind of dagger dagger the one with the arrows knocked to... <laughs> Yeah, not to hurt, <laughs> but to uh, kind of incapacitate her, like to kind kill. of. No. <laughs> I don't want to kill. I don't. I'm good. Okay. I promise. Um, yeah, I'd like to just okay. as quietly as possible try and uh, kind of get her stuck to the tree. Um. Okay. Uh. Go ahead and make me. Um. I think we're gonna call that an entropy check. Um, do okay. you have a, a, an immobilize uh, bane uh, set up on the character sheet? Do I? Probably not. Uh, okay, then uh, just straight up roll me uh, an entropy check. Okay. Uh, and it'll be against uh, their toughness. You said you're targeting the uh, archer, right? The one in the tree, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. 
Go ahead and make your roll. Any advantage? Disadvantage? Uh, she is completely unaware that you were there, so I'm going to give you advantage too. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. So you sit there and you start to tap into this kind of life stealing energy that you've learned you can control. And as you sit there, um, kind of focusing on her, um, you, uh, you sit there and you focus and you actually can feel her pulse for a second. You can feel the muscle fibers in her uh, legs uh, twitching ever so slightly to make sure that she is perfectly still. You can feel her arm completely tense as she holds the bowstring back ready to fire. And as you sit there, you just tweak the muscle fibers in her legs um, to force them to lock completely, fusing her where she, uh, she stands. Uh, and as you do that, um, faster than you were uh, expecting, she turns around and fires two of the arrows at you. Uh, and um, uh, da, 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 da. I'm actually going to take a shot at you. Rude. Uh, 10 versus your guard. Does that hit your guard? Nope. All right, so it, uh, the two arrows fire uh, at you in quick succession, uh, succession and, and um, you uh, very quickly uh, kind of dodge out of the way and they miss you completely. Um, so uh, we're going to go back to Kiri. Uh, Kiri, now that you've come, um, or Kestrel, I'm sorry. Um, Kestrel, now that you've come to the, kind of the edge of where you're going to have cover, um, you smell fire behind oh, you. And you look back and you see that the long grass has been set ablaze <laughs> right behind you. Um, and the fire is very quickly coming towards your position as it's kind of enveloping the area. And you've seen wildfires before. You also know how plants work. Living plants really? are full of water. Um, they don't tend, uh, and, and the grass that you're running through is healthy, vibrant, long, you know, grass. It is not dry wildfire starting type grass shouldn't be so, like we just set a flame to rayon is what you're basically saying yeah it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be burning this quickly you get the idea that the spell used to do this is specifically developed to burn away cover and things like that you have maybe a few seconds before you're going to have uh fire all around you um however as you're sitting there you see at the top of this hill something that doesn't make sense uh it seems like there's this this translucent cloth thing there it looks it's kind of like there's uh translucent cloth that has been um bunched up and and rang out and things like that and it's just it's like a fold shimmering fold in the air it doesn't make a whole lot of sense but it's only 30 feet away and you know beyond shadow of a doubt that's the direction you've been going whatever that thing is that's what's been pulling you here. I mean, and as you're fair. sitting there, it changes. The folds and everything in the air kind of separate and the cloth as the translucent cloth aspect of itself kind of looks like it's been pulled tight, kind of like it's been pulled over an embroidery wheel. And you can see a circular opening um, probably about a little bit bigger than you are just there. An opening, like I can go through it. You don't know. It's yeah. still, there's still like a shimmer to it. There's still some sort of barrier there, but it's flat and you can see through it. And the sky on the other side looks kind of different. You're not sure why, but the colors just seem like when you look at it, the colors seem to change just ever so slightly uh, in the skyline on the other side. Hmm. How close so what do you want is, to do? How close is Stabby? Uh, Stabby, you can't see. Um, but I am going to have you roll me a perception check to see if maybe you can uh, figure out where it went. Okay. Can I see Mr. Rumble Tumble Man? Uh, yes. He's about 30 feet away from you and is moving much faster than someone that size should be able to move. Um, however, my with how fast he's moving... My perception was eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have no idea where this guy is. You, uh, again, from looking at these guys and knowing shadow stalkers just from in general, you've seen them show up in Kakariko Village. You've been hidden in those times. 
Um, this is a very well put together group. Um, they know how to work with each other. Um, the only thing you can think of because Stabby McStabby face has disappeared um, is he must be in the tall grass kind of like what you did and they planned it so that the parts of the tall grass that are burning first are the parts that he's not in. Um, I mean, that's fair. The big fair, guy fair doesn't seem to care about being stealthy. And you're also fairly certain that he's got enough momentum that if he tries to stop, it's not going to happen quickly. Like Fantastic. this is Can is he what is my what is my hookshot range? Uh it's uh twenty five feet. Oh, but it. there's nothing within 25 feet that you can hook yourself to. No, but he's 30 feet away, which is what yes. I thought was. Unfortunately. I was like, <laughs> but 30 feet away, uh, the top of this cliff is 30 feet away. Uh, and so if you wanted to, um, you could get to whatever this thing is up there, or you can turn and uh, start fighting. You do notice, um, even with an A perception, you do notice that the archer woman has turned um right. and she's looking back into the forest she's no longer looking anywhere near you um as much as i would like to go investigate that seeming rip in the universe um i i would like to <laughs> um deal with this first so that i can properly investigate and not charge in like a moron as my compulsion is to investigate not to be like let's just go in because that tends to end badly so okay. Indiana Jones gets in trouble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shoot. Okay. Um, is it moving here. out like that? Is it? Can I wait like until he's close enough <laughs> since I can't be seen, or will the fire get to me first? Um, make me a. Uh, I've been running three different game systems recently. I have to remember what the things are called. Uh, mm -hmm. Make me a uh, make me a logic check. It's three buttons. Twenty seven. I am so logical. <laughs> so sitting there and doing some very quick math in your head, uh, the fire is going to reach you um, within seconds. Right. Um, he but is not traveling fast, fast enough that he would yeah, be within yes. range of your hook shot before Curse the fire you, gets to you. Man. All right. Um, okay. Okay. And it's going out in all directions. I can't like go to the side. I can't. Uh, it's kind of trapped you. Um, so the only towards, way to go is up, uh, basically. Uh, yeah, you, you you have fire. Uh, you could uh, technically head off to uh, the left, which would take you away from this thing, um, but would take you further into Hyrule Field. Uh, and further into more grass that can catch on fire and things like that. So, right. uh, but the fire is coming from the right, um, from your perspective, um, and is literally um, blazing fast, moving incredibly fast towards you. Then I'm gonna run like heck up that hill, because okay. I don't know where else to go, really. Dang it. All right, as you get to the top of the hill, um, you look through, and you see uh, kind of an odd sight. You yourself have never seen a Goron before. They've kind of hidden themselves up in Elden and uh, haven't come out since the Calamity. Um, but you've heard descriptions of them. And you see through this thing as you get up to the top, um, uh, what you assume is a Goron. It's this large, round creature. Its skin is, is this dark brown. It looks like a living rock. Um, and you see it tumbling end over end with something blue and feathery. Um, <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, it doesn't make uh, a whole lot of sense. And eventually the, the, uh, the Goron itself stops and the blue feathery thing keeps on rolling for a little bit, um, stands up and you recognize the description of a, a Rito, um, an avian race. Uh, that has not been seen for a while since before the uh, the calamity, uh, the great calamity. Uh, they um, were not a, a, a massively influential race uh, by any means beforehand. And after the great calamity, um, they've kind of gone into hiding, very similar to the Shika. Um, it's a merry band of misfits. Yeah. Um, and so you see them on there. Um, the weird thing, you can't hear anything, um, but you see them. And as you kind of look around, 
Uh, you can only see them through this stretched piece of like translucent cloth type stuff. If you look around it, they're not there at all. There's no, the ground isn't depressed, nothing. They only seem to exist in this little area. So what would you like to do? So through this little area, like what, what does the terrain look like? Uh, it, it looks like... like about a 30 foot drop down and then more like rolling planes and stuff like that. Um, very typical of, of, in, of how in the field. hole. No, I mean like in the whole thing, the rip where they are. Yep. The terrain looks almost identical. Um, like it's, you see the same hills and stuff like that. The only difference is the sky looks like a slightly different color and there's these two creatures that exist in the hole that don't exist outside of it. So if I were to say step through the hole, is there any, any space to stand on on the other side of it? Or is it, it's an No, you drop? would be stepping yeah. into air. Okay. Um, it is, it is floating like roughly just past the precipice of this drop. So if can you step I through it. touch around, like, can I like go Mer. Like, it's you know a little saying? bit too far uh, to, to bring up a movie reference that's going to get people upset with me. <laughs> if you have ever seen the Super Mario Brothers movie, ah! <laughs> where Mario tries to kind of reach out and touch the wall that Luigi's just jumped through, and he's like, ah, 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 it's yeah, that it. far away. <laughs> it's just barely outside of reach that you could try and touch for it. And no, now you are no it. longer I in cover. Like, try to close it. Like, can I grip onto this whole, like the sides of it? It's too far away for you oh, to touch right. any aspect of it. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to kind of jump to but get into it. But there's a rip on our side, is what I'm saying. Oh, you mean yep. like it's actually in the air? Like it's not. Yeah, at the it's top actually of the hill. physically it's... in. The okay, air. I thought I thought I was like standing in front of it on the hill, and then the other side was just okay. Yep. No, it's okay. physically in the air. Is there anything my hookshot can get a hold of on that side? Um, not where you are. You might, if uh, uh, if you could get a good angle, you might be able to get it to stick into kind of the sheer you drop. You said it's kind of they're a locking... thirty feet away. They right. were 30 feet away when you started. You have when moved they, 30 feet now? to the top. They're now 60 feet away. Dang it. Okay. You moved away from the, well, the one that you can see. You no, moved no, no, away no, from no, 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 um, no. Oh, the Goron and the... Oh, uh, the drop itself is 30 feet to the ground. Okay. Uh, they're a little bit past that. It's, it's hard to gauge distance through this thing because it's kind of like you're looking through um, like a, a magnifying glass at something that's not in focus. So it's hard to gauge how far away they are from you. And again, you've never seen a Goron, so you don't actually know how big they are. I um, don't, but so I do know they look like they're made of rock. And I'm gonna do something he hopefully doesn't think is super rude. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try and jump through and then use him as an anchor. Like the, when I get close enough hook shot so I can like just attach to his back. To be like, oh god! Okay. <laughs> I would like you to roll a hookshot attack. <laughs> it's a grab. It's not. It's not an attack. It's a grab. Uh, I'm still the 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 roll is the same whether it's a no. grab or an attack. I'm just letting him know I'm not attacking you, Elias. Uh -huh. I promise. Uh huh. Well, you know, we don't even know that's me. <laughs> I mean, but we do. But. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 10. Dang it. Ten. What is your guard? Uh, well uh, above 10. <laughs> okay. So as you sit there and you jump through, you feel like your skin, uh, you feel like knives um, are piercing your skin all over your entire body. Um, your everything. mind feels like uh, it has uh, just been gone through uh, a, a vacuum or something. Your entire world seems to separate. As you look around, you see colors that you can't describe and uh, um, uh, you lose your sight for a second. When you finally kind of blink and you realize you're falling, you shoot, you aim for the Goron. Uh, the Goron sees, uh, appears <laughs> to see you, sees something coming in his direction and just holds up this round object. And as your hookshot impacts the object, it explodes. Oh, and you no! see a little bit of uh, his um, 
uh, eyebrows get singed a little bit, but it looks like it's happened before, and he seems completely unfazed <laughs> as you fall. <laughs> um, while that's happening, <laughs> um, uh, Zulta, um, you just do. watched um, the uh, um, <coughs> uh, Sheikah run up the hill and jump through that thing that you know is there. Um, you hear uh, the archer woman um, uh, scream out after she took the shot at you. There's another one up here. I'm stuck. Get back into the forest, everyone. And everyone's attention, you see kind of this disbelief she as she jumps through and then just kind of vanishes. And the big lumbering dude with the ax runs forward and tries to stop, trips over himself, rolls a little bit. Um, and you see him kind of stand up with a little bit of fire on his head, uh, on one of the few bits of hair he has left on his head as he's just looking around, completely dumbfounded. Here's a member of his team and starts running again, realizes his hair is on fire and pats himself a little bit and then keeps on running. Um, you have no idea where, uh, or actually make me a, um, make me a perception roll. Yeah, I'm so good at that. Two. <laughs> Two. <laughs> no idea okay. where the dude with knives went. None <laughs> whatsoever. He could have blinked out of existence. You would have no idea. Wouldn't it be great if Stabby McStiverson was blinked out of existence? That'd be great. You can make this happen, Jim. So. <laughs> <laughs> you donate $4,000. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, so you now best. see the um, the caster start turning towards you, and you see her pre preparing of or see him preparing a very familiar spell. Um, you've seen it used. You know you attempted to learn it during your training when you were younger, and it just wasn't. You you just never quite attained the mastery over magic that um, uh, you were supposed to. So you know the spell. You can't really replicate it. Um, but you know it hurts like hell because part of your training was having your other uh, trainees use the spell on you um, because you guys would practice on each other because that's how that's the best way to make sure you understand how a spell to work is to use it on one of your friends. Um, of course. So you see them conjuring this. It seems they've spotted you in the tree. Um, what would you like to do now? Again, you're roughly about 120 gonna... feet away. From this wrinkle in space. Well, join me in this alternate universe. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna go towards the wrinkled space because I figure at the very least there's a Sheikah over there and we can maybe party. I'll strengthen numbers and not be surrounded by four people that want to kill me. Okay. So uh, I'm movement just is thirty try feet. Towards the hill. So you can yeah. you can move thirty feet without any issues. Um, if you want to use your action to dash, you can move sixty feet. Or you can decide to use your action to do something else, maybe to slow people down, or, you know, what would you like to do? For those of you that don't know how, uh, while well, she's thinking, for those of you who don't know how Open Legends works, um, you have these uh, attribute scores, and literally the sky's the limits. There's no classes, there's no every anything. So if you can explain it and explain how your attribute score would make it happen, um, I'll come up with a DC for it, you'll roll, and then it'll go. So it's a very open-ended kind of system. So um, <laughs> what would you like to do? Just just make a mad dash for it? Do you want to try to uh, use uh, any of your power to affect the terrain, affect the other people around you? What do you want to do? This is where meta me and Zolta differ because okay. I would dash and try and get as far away as possible. Okay. But she's ambitious, so she's Let's gonna go this. thirty feet, and then she's gonna lightning McLightning them. <laughs> okay. Um, are are you going to target a single one? Are you going to multi-target? What would you like to do? Uh, I will take my mul. Is is my lightning? My lightning's not a boom. Um. I think I'm just going to attack the one that has magic first. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a legend point uh, for, uh, you know, making a role-playing decision versus a mechanical decision. So go ahead and take that legend point. 
Um, you have uh, the dude, uh, he's roughly, uh, because you were smart enough to realize running directly at him, maybe not the greatest idea. Uh, so he's roughly about 30 feet away from you laterally. Um, so uh, well within your range, go ahead and make your attack roll. No advantage, disadvantage. Uh, not unless you have feats or anything that modify uh, things like that. Well, that um, one's just a direct attack. I have a. I boom. believe. Uh, don't you have? Um, because uh, it's entropy, right? That you're using for this attack. Um, for this one, no, I'm using energy. Okay. Um, you can just fire bolts of entropy at him, um, uh, if you want. Um, that is that is an acceptable way to use your entropy skill is to just summon up the kind of control of life energy and attack with your entropy score if you want. And that would give you advantage one because of your feet. Yeah. Cool. So it's up to you. What would you like to do? I'm going to use lightning. Okay. So do. you oh, start. 18. Yeah. And what's that against? Um, that is against guard. Guard. So you sit there and you kind of bring up the inherent lightning um, charge that is uh, just kind of inherently in all Zora, and you sit there and point it, and this bolt of static electricity fires out, hits him, and you see him get shocked enough that uh, the spell that he was I was creating uh, kind of fizzles, and he seems a little flustered by it. Um. <laughs> So, um, you, uh, uh, you make the attack, uh, and, and kind of stun him in the process. Um, but then you feel, uh, some movement from behind you and I have to get the right person. What is he doing again? Oh, he's really bad. He's super, super bad. Uh, he is going to... Uh, Blink out of existence. Uh, no. Uh, suddenly, you hear a whooshing sound. Um, 14 against your guard. No. Yeah, that's the one oh. damage. Okay. So, uh, in uh, uh, Open Legend, the minimum amount of damage you can take is three. So, uh, if it hits uh, your guard score, um, bare minimum, you will take three damage. Um, so, you hear from behind you some movement, and then you feel um, a sharp pain go across your back um, and you feel wetness on your lower back and as you go down you reach you see your Zora blood starting to come out as he comes around and slashes at you and then faster than you've seen anyone move he spins around and comes back with another uh, attack uh, with his uh, 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 he has two daggers and this one unfortunately has disadvantage three because of how the system works 12 versus guard. Nope. So he takes another swing at you and misses. Um, and so you can feel that, um, you know, you've been cut. Um, you are now 90 feet away from this. Um, he was the only one close enough to get there. This other guy is moving towards you and you're relatively certain um, he will be close enough to do something to you uh, very quickly. Um, however, uh, unfortunately, and I just realized I have really cool music that I could be playing right now. I, I prefer to hear Whoa. the sounds of the air conditioner in the background. Oh, hey. <laughs> um, you feel like you should have like a. An now I have to make decisions. Totally energized. Ah. Turn that down just a little bit. So it's not overwhelming. Um, so, um, what do you want to do now? You have this guy who's right next to you. You have this this caster that's about 30 feet away from you, and you have this very large brute that's just running at you that's about 20 feet away from you. And 90 feet away is this this kind of terror in space and time, whatever it is. <laughs> Casual terror in space and time. No, it's real. That is powerful enough to get rid of Alex. <laughs> you know, All right, keep a track on your center. counters, people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, what would you like to do? Again, um, Open Legend is about storytelling and things like that. So, um, think of this as a cinematic fight scene. You know, you're, you're in a movie right now, you know, 
Um, don't think so much mechanically, well, I have these abilities. Think, okay, what would be really, you know, a very cinematic way to deal with this, you know, using what I have? You know, I run over here and then I explode this or something, you know, be, be cinematic in what you do. Uh, as I feel the pain across my back and I turn and I see this creature that's damaged me, I'm pissed off. I am Azora. They're not allowed to do something like that to me. So I turn around and I want to use my life drain to start taking their energy away. Uh, okay, go ahead and roll your life drain boon. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, is that a major action? I uh, probably. Okay. Well, for mechanical purposes, we'll say you kind of start activating this. Um, uh, so go ahead and roll your boon. Let me know what you roll. 20. All right. So oh. that does count as a success. <laughs> so you have now uh, uh, tapped into this this uh, control of life force that you have to the point where now you not only can control other people's life force to cause damage, you can rip some of their very life essence and bring it into you. <gasps> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> She's a wraith. I'm um, excited. Uh, so you still have uh, you still have 90 feet away, and you have three people converging on you, and you hear from behind you um, uh, the sound of something moving through the air very, very quickly. Um, and I have to bring up the right character sheet. Da, 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 da. As an arrow... <clears throat> comes through the air and gets a six versus your guard. Ignore it. It just flies and, and hits the, the burnt ground near you. Um, so um, with uh, you, you've activated this ability. We're going to call that a minor action for right now just to keep the story going. So you've acted this ability. You now can sense their life force. You can now tell. You kind of feel this hunger that you want to just slowly kind of uh, start draining them of their life and, and uh, sustaining yourself upon it. What do you want to do with this newfound power? I am going to start draining their energy with my entropy and death drain. Okay. What? Um, who specifically do you want to do it to? The one who attacked me. Okay. Now, if you want, you can multi-attack it. You will get disadvantage one for each additional target you target. So if you want to try and hit all three of them at the same time, you can. It'll just be three separate rolls, each with disadvantage three. Okay. And then I have the attack specialization on this, so I get one advantage on it, so then yep, it'd so be... then it would be, if you, if you targeted all three, disadvantage three plus advantage one turns into disadvantage two. Hmm. Sorry for the mechanics talks, Choices. guys. We will we will not be so mechanical as we go forward. Techno babble, techno babble, techno babble. Yeah. Um. No, I'm super pissed off at the one who attacked me. Okay. So I'm focusing on hurting them. Go ahead. Make uh make an attack advantage one. I need to be five. Oh, and what's it against? Toughness. That's uh, that's a bad thing for him. <laughs> Did you say fifty-five? Uh, twenty-five. Uh, twenty-five. Fifty-five would be amazing. I thought Even I thought it said thirty-five, like, oh. and I was just like, um, oh man. So that <laughs> is uh, his toughness is thirteen. So that is uh, you do twelve damage just from that because you rolled ten above uh, their uh, uh, their defense. You can inflict uh, an entropy-based bane for free. Um, uh, just because of how powerfully you just did this, so I what do you want to? What do you want to give him? Persistent damage. Persistent damage is a bane. So I would like to do that one. All right. So you sit there and you conjure within yourself, and you feel the darkness kind of starting to come out, and you get this kind of um, you you know you really shouldn't enjoy it, but it's 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 kind of you know addicting, and, and you feel it, and you sit there and you simply grab his arm and you drain 
out of him and you watch his skin turn white and you watch veins start to pop out uh, of his skin. And, and as he staggers backwards about 10 feet, you see him start coughing up blood and you see his hands shaking uncontrollably as he seems to be in an immense amount of pain. He is no longer right next to you. You still have your movement. What would you like to do? I'm going to move backwards up the hill. Okay. Um, they have realized that you are dangerous to get close to. Uh, so uh, Stabby McStabby face uh, is going to go hide. Uh, unfortunately, um, I think it's a D6 the damage you do, right? Um, I'm going to tell this. you this. You do a D, a D6 of damage <laughs> with your persistent damage, Bane. Okay. Nice. Um, so I'd like you to roll 1D6. And remember, all dice explode. If you roll a six, roll again and add them together. So, if I'm rolling in roll 20, it's Type two exclamation slash, points? Yep, slash roll space 1d6 exclamation point exclamation point. All right, 11. Just like that, folks. She rolled 1d6 and she rolled mm -hmm. an 11 on a d6. This is one of the reasons I enjoy this. You watch as he turns to go forward and drops to the ground dead you feel his life force stop. And there's no longer something there. Uh, the three other ones realizing you are very dangerous to get close to. Um, the big tough guy uh, seems too dumb to uh, really uh, do much other than he just brings his very, very large ax up and kind of positions himself in between. You hear the familiar crackle of lightning as the uh, mage uh, looks to be attempting to uh, stop you from moving and that 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 she's going to try to attack you with this whether or not it works is oh that works um all right so she sits there and, and shoots this uh, net of lightning and you feel a very familiar feeling your entire body is racked with with um a lightning energy arcing all over it you kind of um get to the point where your muscles seize and you can't move at all um, and you hear the familiar sound of arrows flying through the air as uh, uh, you're going to have to do with a disadvantage one because you don't have a friend that's that's dumb enough to get close to you. Sorry, I talk to myself a lot. It keeps me insane. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You just got to accept it and move on. <laughs> yep. That's that's our lives. Ow. Versus attack twenty versus guard. Yeah, that hurts. All right. So how much um, how much hurt and guard is that? Uh, that is seven hurt for guard, and then I already took off for the lightning before. Okay. So uh, you take seven damage there. Uh, she shoots again. Um, again, firing very, very, very quickly. Twenty three versus guard. Yeah, that's going to hurt. All right. So I believe that is... What's your guard again? 13. All right. Uh, she's going... Uh, as uh, the second arrow flies through the air, the first one hits you and uh, hits you deep in the shoulder. The second one flies past you, kind of stings uh, uh, across your arm. And... Um, uh, or no, it hits you in the leg. And um, normally it would uh, uh, prevent you from moving. But because they attack simultaneously... They kind of decided to double up on their um, uh, idea to stop you from moving. And so you are mobilized twice, which doesn't <laughs> do anything. But they didn't expect the other one to succeed. So they were they were being extra careful. Um, so it goes back to you now. Um, to resist a Bane is a minor action. Just click on any one of your defenses. If you roll a 10 or higher, you are no longer immobile. Uh, nope. I rolled a four. So you're stuck there. While this is happening, um, uh, da, 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 da. Aruna. Oh, yeah. You are having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> you a little bit. knew that there was something wrong happening in the world. Um, you felt that Hyrule Field had the answer to it. And then when you were there, you saw this weird kind of wrinkle 
in the air that kind of coalesced. And as you were looking through it, um, you heard some sounds and they didn't quite make sense. You heard this, this phrase blood eye um, that you've never heard before. Um, Rude. And then you, you looked over and you saw something blue and feathery coming directly at you. And uh, uh, what uh, ended up happening is this blue feathery thing hit you, hit you hard, hit you hard enough to make you fall to the ground and roll for a little while. Um, and you finally realize this blue feathery thing, you think it was alive. Um, you haven't met too was? many feathery things that are dead. Um, and so you kind of kick it off of you and stop rolling, and it rolls a little bit further. And you stand up, and you look at this this creature, and it's, it's a Rito with an accordion, which explains the weird squeaking sound every time you rolled over it. Yeah. And uh, the Rito kind of adjusts himself, gives this very kind of precise uh, formal bow and as soon as that happens you hear uh, from above this sound of and you look up to see a sharp object coming right um, right for your face and so you just pick up um, you just reach into your bomb band and you pick up a bomb and kind of hold it in place and this thing hits the bomb instead of you you singe your eyebrows like you've done so many times before yeah whatever um, yeah and you see um, this girl um, who looks like a Sheikah. Um, you haven't seen uh, Sheikah outside of Kakariko Village for a while now. Um, so you're a little bit surprised to see her and she's falling from 30 feet in the air. Um, she seems less than happy about that for some odd reason. <laughs> um, so uh, while that's happening, you can still from somewhere hear the sound of battle. Like you can hear very faintly, like you're you're underwater. You can hear the sound of people gasping in pain. You can hear the sound of of crackles of lightning, and um, you can kind of almost smell something burning. And as you watch this Sheikah girl plummet from the sky, um, you notice another one of these wrinkle things um, appears to the right of this hill from where you're standing. Um, and through looking through it, you see fire. Um, you see the long grass is on fire and you can hear things happening over there. And you hear a feminine voice kind of cry out in pain um, and uh, anguish. Um, but you can't really see someone there. Uh, what would you like to do? There is so much happening at once. Oh yes, my gosh. There is. <laughs> okay. Uh, Birdman bowed. You do get the idea that despite the fact that she's falling from about 30 feet, you think she, she'll she probably be okay if she lands. Like she'll, it won't feel good, but she's it, it falling doesn't with look style. Like it's going to be a, yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. she doesn't look like oh, someone that's going to be killed by just, just a simple. <laughs> I've fallen many times before, really. Uh, okay. Wow. Uh, let's look at the the Sheikah girl. She seems to be falling with style. Um, <laughs> akin to a story I heard once. And then, <laughs> how far? How far? You are a toy. You're a sad, strange little man. <laughs> it's an it's an old Goron tale. It's it's a yes. Old Goron it's about tale. You tell to children. Things. Toys, really. <laughs> My toys are explosive. A toy story, if you will. <laughs> How far is this new wrinkle? It's to um, my right. It is like ten feet in front of you. Ten feet. Oh, it's okay. And, and it just appeared now. It yeah, wasn't there before. It's brand new. Um, yeah. Is is which is starting to worry you that this is never like you are what in your your late teens, early twenties, something like that. Uh, twenties. Yeah. Twenties. Yeah. Young You've adult. You've been around Goron. for twenty years. <laughs> You've never even heard stories of this happening. Like, this is weird, and yeah. now it's happened three times in as many minutes. Yeah. Um, and I can't... I see. I only see, like, fire. Grass on fire, right? 
Yeah, you see grass on fire. You're not at a really good uh, uh, thing to be able to look through it too much because 10 feet away, you only have a limited viewing. If you get closer, you can probably look through it a little bit more. You've realized this is kind of like a window or something. Yeah, you kind of look people it. coming out of the other one. Uh, yeah. So I'll probably, I'll try to either adjust my view or walk up a little bit just to see if anyone's on their way towards me from this one as well. Um, you look through, you see uh, a man in dark uh, robes um, conjuring lightning. Um, you uh, see uh, the corpse. Uh, it looks kind of like a desiccated corpse, um, almost mummified, of a man and two daggers next to him. Okay. And um, you can see uh, this very large uh, humanoid with a massive axe wearing similarly colored um scale male armor they're all wearing this dark kind of black and uh black and brown armor um and then you see a zora uh who's bleeding rather heavily um by the way did you take the 13 hit points from uh the attack that you did uh zilta it was only or whatever the half of it okay so you I took that um, before I got attacked. Okay. You would have also taken, after you got attacked, you would have taken the life drain, um, the persistent damage. I'm going to say you would have gotten that as well. So um, half of that would be five. You have five extra hit points. Yay. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. She's I'm getting dead better. Yet. I'm getting better. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you see this woman, and it's obvious these two people um, are converging upon her. Um, and you can see this kind of pain look in her eye. She doesn't seem to be aware of your presence whatsoever. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm, I'm going to probably... Uh, well, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably gonna think that this this blue person was supposed to come out, but got stopped, and so he he's gonna look at these this gang of of dark clad bullies and uh, say uh, probably well he's gonna try to yell out to them <laughs> he's gonna try to yell out to them from the other side. Um, Is that God? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's not nice! And then just chunk a bomb in their direction. Okay, as you scream, you notice nobody reacts to it, except the Zora kind of seems to, to hear it, but doesn't know where it's coming from. Uh, Zulta, you hear this very deep voice say, Hey, that's not nice! Um, come from somewhere. But the other, the Shadow Stalkers don't seem to be aware of it whatsoever. Like, it seems like you're the only person that heard it. And then you see this very large rock-shaped creature, probably eight or nine feet tall, come out of nowhere at the yes. base of the hill. I uh, I chunk a bomb through it. I didn't step through it. Oh, you chuck a bomb through it. Um, In the direction as of As you throw the, the bomb, uh, the bomb sails through it and drops <laughs> on the other side of it, doing nothing, not going through the opening. Oh... Well, damn. <laughs> I I will. Uh, you see it land like it kind of disappears, and you kind of look around, and you see the so, bomb on the other side. So it, it explodes. Oh, it explodes! It explodes! It doesn't just like drop in or, or anything. No, it it passes through like nothing's there. Oh, it okay. Yeah, it's just it's just like you threw the bomb at the grass on the other side of this thing. It didn't go through. The portal, once it went through, you couldn't see the bomb anymore until you looked around the portal and saw that it landed on the other side. Right where you aimed it, like it, it landed where you're supposed to, but, but you don't see the, the people you were aiming at. The ground isn't on fire there. Um, it's a little bit singed now and a bomb exploded. Oh. Um, That's curious. Um, well, I'm going <laughs> to... I don't know how long any of this takes, turn but this back on. <laughs> I don't know how long any of this takes, but I will, uh, upon seeing that, scratch my head a little bit, go over. Oh no, it's exploded. Never mind. Scratch my head a little bit. Um, 
try and like peek my head and arm through and try again. Uh, okay, as soon as you kind of reach through it, um, you feel knives um, all across your arm that eventually just go all across your body. Your brain feels like it's going through a vacuum. You start seeing colors that you can't describe and visions of strange things. There's a dark man um, that appears in front of you. Um, uh, and all you hear is uh, he's in these these black and red robes um, that cover his face and, and seem to almost be just a shadow of a person that an actual person himself. And uh, you hear him say the phrase, finally. And then you are in a, the same place, but different. Creepy. You move forward a little bit. You can see the people there, you look behind you, there's no wrinkle behind you anymore. Um, <laughs> you, you, you look around and you can see the woman there. Um, Zulta, you've just seen a Goron appear out of nowhere. Um, and he looks very bewildered. Uh, the uh, Shadow Stalkers look over and see a Goron appear out of nowhere <laughs> and are very confused. Um, but the, uh, the one that is uh, conjuring the lightning turns and goes, listen, Stay out of this if you don't want to get hurt. And then continues to conjure lightning. All right, Badger. Uh, I have a very nice hat. Sad little king of a sad little hill. That's a weird detail to throw in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yeah, that was basically uh, you've used about 15 feet of your movement. Um, oh, we're going to say still. the bomb. We're going to call that a minor action since it did nothing. Yeah. Okay. That was you testing. So I, I, I just got, yeah, sucked in. And then, uh, and he said, he said, stay out of this if you don't want to get hurt. Yeah. He said, yeah, stay out of this if you don't want to get hurt. That's half the fun. And I'll just chunk it at his face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoa. Go ahead and make me a, uh, a, uh, uh, hand bomb, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah, hand bomb. Make me a hand bomb attack roll. Uh... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, 23. 23, what is that against? That's against the guard. Guard, okay. I have so many different... <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, uh, wow. Uh, so you sit there and you hurl this bomb as it hits him... Uh, he gets smacked uh, by it uh, and blown uh, back. Uh, you actually do 10 over his guard defense. <laughs> do you have a uh, bane you would like to inflict? Uh, was he holding a weapon? Uh, no, he was conjuring magic in his hands. Eh, well, then uh, it's persistent damage. D6. All right. He is now set on fire as he yeah! hits the ground. <laughs> nice. Um, and you see him just crying in agony uh, <laughs> as he hits the ground. Um, Zulta, you have no idea who this new savior is, but they are apparently on your side. Um, uh, uh, Do I still have movement? Aruna, as of right now, you have, um, uh, I think, 15 feet of movement left. Uh, Zulta is about 30 feet away from you, and she seems to be heading towards the top of the hill where you see that familiar wrinkle. Oh, so the um, other one's still there. So yeah, the other one's still there. The one that you just came through it's is gone. Not. Well, yeah, I'm gonna just call out and ask to the Zora, "Are you okay?" And start like uh, you know, kind of like whenever whenever you you have like two tasks in your mind and it translates to movement of like I'm just gonna like split the difference and like walk between these two things. I'm going to, like, walk okay. kind of towards the Zora, but at the same time curve towards the exit <laughs> so while, see, while asking uh, if she's okay. So Zolta, uh, this this large Goron, whom you've never met before, asks if you're okay, uh, just took out this uh, uh, mage. She's on the ground, like, trying to pat this stuff out, um, terrified, it, it, it seems, uh, and on fire. Uh, and he starts kind of circling around you towards the top of this hill. Um, you can answer him if you want. I will be fine as soon as these foes are gone. And uh, 
Can I attack the one who's trying to stop his fire? Uh, <laughs> if you would like to, you can. I would. Uh, he looks, uh, I'm going to let you know right now, he looks real bad. <laughs> like, well, uh, on the ground, uh, on fire. <laughs> he's already been hit once there, before. Right? <laughs> he's on the ground, he's on fire. He's just not looking good. Who else uh, is nearby? Uh, you have the very large refrigerator shaped gentleman that is running towards you. <laughs> refrigerator and, uh, shaped? <laughs> And it's a you've lost form. track of wherever the archer is. She's somewhere in the woods, but you have no idea where she is right now. Hiding. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> I think I want to try and attack both uh, fire death guy and okay. the fridge. So describe, describe like physically, describe what you're doing as you sit there and you conjure this energy that you're going to aim at two different targets. Just describe it to me. I'm using my death drain and I'm kind of glaring as I'm focusing on sending out a wave towards both of them. Okay, so you sit there and you conjure and you start to feel their life essences and, and, and they're kind of like these little pinpricks in your mind um, and you feel their life essences and you can feel their hearts beating and you sit there and you just let this wave out, hoping that you can grasp that life energy and just draw it back into you. Uh, go ahead and make two attack rolls with uh, disadvantage one uh, which on each then, of them. With which makes them flat roll. advantage one becomes zero. Yeah. Uh, Okay, 22 for the first. That misses. He has a 400 guard. Ah. What? Toughness. Yeah. What? What's his toughness? That refrigerator guard. Oh, it's toughness. Oh, it's yes. toughness. Uh, he actually he has, has a, a 400 guard? No, he doesn't have a 400 <laughs> guard. Um, oh, that was a joke. Uh, 31 much... for the second. <laughs> Girl. <Okay. laughs> All right, so we're going to start. I you drain the remaining five hit points away <laughs> from the uh, mage, and his corpse Amazing. just shrivels up. Uh, what was it? How much was the other today. one? What was that roll? Yeah, uh, so there was 22 and then 31. 31 against toughness. <laughs> I think this guy has a decent toughness. He's just a walking refrigerator. <laughs> Let's see. Climb inside. Well, he has, a, he has a toughness of 16. So, uh, <laughs> you do 16 points of damage to him. He's still alive, but that's definitely 10 over. Do you want to inflict a bane? Yes, persistent damage. <laughs> right? Oh so my god! So you watch him writhe in pain as you draw upon his life force, and you can see him coughing up blood, and you see his skin turn this kind of gray color. Um, Aruna, you watch her sit there and just extend her hands and watch both of these people just start writhing and falling. One of them just falls to the ground and immediately desiccates. And the other one becomes obviously very sick because he's coughing up and puking blood. Um, uh, and you watch as the Zulta who has, who's bleeding, uh, the Zora who's bleeding rather heavily, you watch as some of her wounds start to close at the same time. So cool. If, if I can talk, I'm like, are you sure you're okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, bro, when that it. happens, you watch uh, the big dude uh, do an about face and bolt into the forest. Um, and again, you have no idea where the archer is. Um, but as of right now, uh, they both, uh, you can kind of see the, uh, the brute cause he's big and he's just barreling his way through the forest, but he's moving really, really fast. Yeah. Um, and, uh, has made it past the, uh, the edge of the forest and will probably within, you know, the next, you know, 10 seconds or so be disappeared in the forest. Yeah. Um, so effectively that danger is gone. Um, and there is a Goron standing next to you. You've seen Goron before. Uh, some of their envoys have visited the city. 
Um, some of them have even gifted uh, your family with, uh, uh, you know, heirlooms, things like that. Just just nice things to keep, uh, you know, good relationships with uh, some of the noble families of the Zor Kingdom uh, in general. So you've seen Zor before. Uh, he's a bit bigger than you're used to seeing. Um, and you notice uh, his skin is rougher than you're used to seeing and his eyebrow part of it there's a scar on it that looks burned in um <laughs> and his eyebrows are singed right now and like he seems like kind of a, a, a rough dude <laughs> for how kind of nice he's been to you so far um and again that shimmering um you see it start to, to kind of fluctuate a little bit um and kind of shift and 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 uh the whole kind of thing moves a little bit starts vibrating uh, at the top of the hill. Uh, but you still know beyond a shadow of a doubt that is your answer. Your answer to why the world is wrong is there. You know it. So what would you like to do? You are you are no longer bound by combat rules. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, because he asked if I'm okay, <laughs> I'm going to let him know I am fine. I'd like to see what this is, though. And I'm going to start walking towards the ring. This leads to the other people. There's a Shika and a Rito over there. Well, I think there's a Shika. She was falling when I left. She might be dead. <laughs> I also think she tried to attack me. But so while that's happening, um, Pierre, uh, you oh. stood up. You exist. Weird shit is happening. <laughs> Um, the Goron you ran into uh, kind of looked at you, you bowed, because that's what you do when you meet new people. You're a flamboyant kind of guy. Uh, and after you bowed, he looked past you into nothing. Like he just looked past you into nothing and then ran and disappeared. Like he just doesn't exist. At the same time, you hear from above you... Um, the scream of a girl and you see a shika which again something you haven't seen in quite quite a while um they're not in, they're not incredibly rare um but they're uh yeah, nowhere rare. near as populous as uh uh the rito were um even at the height uh of the empire uh and so you see the shika girl falling from 30 feet above and it looks like she's going to impact the ground you also look back for that wrinkle that you came through it's not there anymore. Hmm. Okay. Well. Uh, hmm. I'm how far from? Uh, uh, laterally, you're about 10 feet uh, away from her. She is falling above you, and if you move 10 feet, you can get below her. But do you want to? I've gained I'm velocity. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can try to catch 30 her. feet per second per second. So, you know, that's... Uh, it's thing that he would do oh thank you sir all right um i would like you to make me a might check i try oh i have a score of zero in that so that'll be fun um we're just gonna be a pile <laughs> so i rolled an eight <laughs> so very similar to how you met this goron uh, this Shika meets you. She lands on you. Um, because there's still a little bit of a slope where you are, you both end up rolling end over end. And eventually you stop. Um, and I am going to have you choose even or odd. Odd. All right. Because I am an odd ball. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kiri, you get to choose. Uh, when you end, are you on top or are you on the bottom? <laughs> this feels like a much more personal question <laughs> that I was told to avoid in this stream. This is <laughs> I'm just well, asking, when you stop, are you on the top or are you on the bottom? Nothing um, more than I'm that. Going to We're not going to. Obviously, the audience is not going to read into your answer at all. No. no. Surely not, no. no. Um, I'm going to say, since uh, Kinestrels is an agile sort of mathematical brain person, uh, she's going to end up on top and immediately look back towards the thing with her hookshot. I'm like, ah! <laughs> Thinking that they can come right. after her. So, Pierre, you are <laughs> on the ground now, pinned 
underneath <laughs> this girl. You realize, um, uh, for as as kind of frail as she looks, um, uh, she's kind of lithe and uh, is um, kind of solid muscle. Um, like she's she she definitely uh, is is athletic. I guess you can call. And she kind of has you pinned, but she's not looking at you. She has this weird device that she has just looked and pointed backwards at the top of this hill. What would you like to do? <laughs> well, that didn't go as planned. Um, <laughs> uh, before I answer that question, oh, uh, my accordion. Um, no! Where did that go? Am I on it? Uh, she is on it. She basically has, uh, basically her stomach is kind of pressing the accordion into yours just because of how she landed and because she's like arcing backwards <laughs> to that. No! And then he, and, and then he uh, blinks out we'll, of existence. <laughs> yes, and he winks out of existence. So, um, uh, I'll give him a couple of seconds to come back uh, to see if he does. Otherwise, uh, We'll uh, we'll just go back to the other realm really quickly. Meanwhile, back on the farm. So, uh, Kestrel, as you uh, look back, um, <coughs> oh, it looks like he's coming back now. I can't tell if Twitch hates me or if it's my internet. It's honestly All both. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, you're. Um, uh, it's not the greatest idea to squish an accordion the wrong way. Um, <laughs> so she is pushing, putting pressure on it the wrong way. It hasn't caused any damage as of right now. Uh, so he Kestrel, kicks him off. Um, <laughs> Kestrel, as you look back, um, you don't see uh, a whole lot of your back. So very quickly, <laughs> is there anything you want to do before you leave again? Uh, excuse me, man. You called me. Uh, <laughs> like none of that. Uh, Little shot, I'm uh, No Repeat like everything you just said. One more time. <laughs> He's frozen. Okay. Um uh, we will come, come back to you two. Who is the bar? Whoa. Whoa. We're gonna have two Alex's <laughs> I thought six people weren't allowed in this app. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Oh, <laughs> All right, we're gonna come. Um, we're gonna come back to you two, uh, Zulta and Aruna. You yeah. guys are are uh, in like there. <laughs> Leave the video off for a couple of seconds. Just tell me what you were going to say because we haven't heard it yet. Alex. Uh, excuse me. Can you please get off? You're on my accordion. <laughs> If you may, if if you would, be so kind, miss. <laughs> um, Kestrel's gonna notice. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> like distractedly Thank you. scramble off. I appreciate it. And then be like, still like waiting, just waiting. Like, uh, uh. bye. <laughs> nice he uh, you. seems content with that answer. <laughs> uh, Luna ends. <laughs> <clears throat> mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are in the other realm. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, what would you guys like to do? Uh, Zuto, you get to the top of the hill and you look through and you can see the, um, uh, uh, you can see the Shika that ran through and jumped through this thing before. She's pointing this weird device in your general direction as also seems a little bit red in the face as she's talking to what looks like uh, a Rito um, with blue feathers. Um, and she keeps the, she keeps like going back to him and saying something and then turning back around. You can't actually hear what she's saying though. Um, you hear like strange muddled sounds, kind of like you're listening through while underwater, um, which is really weird because you've lived a lot of your life underwater and can hear better than most underwater. And it still feels kind of weird. Uh, and sounds kind of weird. Um, so, uh, what do you want to do? And there's the, the Goron is coming up behind you now. I look back over my shoulder at the woods. You know, mm -hmm. 
no point in going back. And I step through. Okay. So you feel like knives all over your body, piercing you all at the same time. Your head feels like it's going through a vacuum. You see colors that you can't explain, images and shapes and things. And then you, nothing is on fire anymore, which is kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> and you're 30 feet in the air. Um, uh, Kestrel, you see a <laughs> Zora just pop out of the air uh, through this kind of wrinkle um, and start falling. Ah! <laughs> and and she in no way even remotely resembles the figures, right? Uh, nothing like them. Okay, nothing cool. Like them. Then I, all right. Um, is there? Hmm. Hmm. You do notice a few cuts on her. You see a little bit of blood on her. Um, uh, and if you make me a perception check, you might notice, notice some more things. All right, well, let's do this. Perceive power! Yes, what do you think? 21, I am so perceptive. I am the perceptive Yeah, definitely. Um, you notice that uh, she has blood on her uh, clothing and she wears a little bit more clothing than you used to seeing Zora wear. Not that they all run around naked, um, uh, but they, they well, tend to be kind of game. minimalist <laughs> in their clothing choices. Um, because they live underwater and things like that. Um, and she seems to be wearing a little bit more clothing than you're used to. And you notice there are cuts in her clothing and blood, uh, obviously from those cuts, but looking through, you see there are no cuts in her skin, despite Wait. the fact that there's blood there, which um, is weird. What I know enough about, I mean, I know I've, I haven't really left my village much, but I'm assuming I know enough about the Shadow Stalkers that I would know that Zora are also tend to be targets. Um, I just yes, lost no. your mic. Sorry, you say, uh, say. Can you hear me now? Everything after Shadow Stalkers. Everything after Shadow Stalkers. Say again. So, um, I'm assuming I know enough about them to know that they often go after Zora as well. Um, yes, River Zora specifically um, is a, a a term that has been coined. Uh, by the Shadow Stalkers and, and society as a whole, as basically there was a sect of Zora that um, uh, sided with Calamity Ganon during the Great Calamity. So much um, like the Yiga clan, I've got a thing basically yeah. where like, you guys Very, very also similar. They were allies of the Yiga clan. Profiled. Uh, the, the big difference between um, what happened with uh, like, Caesar versus um, River Zora and Shika is um, there's no way to tell the difference between a River Zora and a uh, Caesora. They look identical. They're not mm -hmm. technically a different race. They're a different yeah. ideology. Um, okay. And because so. the Zora were the ruling uh, race, um, they didn't get hunted to extinction like the Shika did. All Shika instantly became members of the Yiga clan, whether they were or not. So, yeah. So, anyway, um, Karis, you, uh, I'm going to use basic logic in this brief moment to go, all right, I was being attacked. She looks like she's also been attacked. It's probably on my side, even though I was not aware of you behind me at any point. Um, plus, I'd really like to not see anyone go splat. That seems, ugh. Um, is it possible, looking back at this hill thing, is it possible to maybe embed the hookshot into the steep part of the hill? Uh, you think that uh, uh, if you hit the right angle, you could, and you could kind of launch yourself up and basically hang off of, at any point off of this 30 foot drop. Cool, I wanna try to do that and like interrupt her trajectory. So like basically like try to like- kind of kind of grab yeah. her so we can kind of slide okay. down the hill rather than like okay. boom as there is no um i'm going to need I'm uh small, i'm gonna I need a logic check from you yeah, yeah i'm gonna need a logic check from you give me give me the logic roll the thing do the stuff 18. Huh? what'd you, you get 18. oh 18. uh 18 is uh good enough um, you're able to kind of, you know, you see your trajectory, you hit, you do there. Um, I now need a mic check 
from you as you grab onto her and you feel your arm just start to go um, oh. as she's a little bit heavier well. than you thought she'd be. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, how do I roll that? Uh, just click oh, on right bite. There. Okay. Yeah. I Better don't. This is not going to go well. No, I've got a zero, sweetheart. This is. I'm not built hey. for strength. <laughs> I'm not built for strength. What happened I'm to there athletics? to like slow your fall, not catch you. Twelve. That's better than 12 me. Twelve is not horrible. Um, so you are able to kind of uh, uh, pull her. Um, however, uh, as you do that, um, your hook shot uh, kind of gets dislodged a little bit, and exactly as you wanted to, you kind of slide down the mountain uh, side. Um, <laughs> however, as her full weight goes onto your arm, you hear a popping sound. Um, and you feel your shoulder get popped uh, out of its joints. Um, you take, uh, I'm going to roll this. I need to stop Kess, putting these let's dice be honest. Away. This isn't the first dislocated shoulder we've encountered. We'll be fine. Uh, yeah, you take one lethal damage. What? Wow. Already? Yeah. Wait, like, seriously? My... Uh, yeah, the so difference between... So in a in a, um, I total hit point from a dislocated shoulder. So uh, in uh, Open Legend, um, if you uh, uh, if you wait ten minutes, you get all your hit points back, unless it's lethal damage. So lethal damage uh, takes longer to heal, is all it is. Um, so as someone who has dislocated their shoulder an obscene amount of times, I call crap on this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm it hurts like the word I'm trying not to say right now, but when you put it back in, it's like it never happened. Yeah, so I'm, and it's I'm it's very it's very possible that. that you might be able to find a way right. to heal this lethal damage. Fine. Fine. Um, <laughs> however, um, right now we're going to call it lethal lethal damage. Otherwise, uh, the damage Rude. goes away in ten minutes. But so can. this is a, this is a mechanics thing more than anything else. Um, All right. Fine. And. Um, uh, as someone that has to dislocate their hip uh, in order for it to move due to a bone growth, um, yeah, I know that once you do it once, it's uh, uh, you have a predisposition to make it much, much easier for you to dislocate that particular joint over and over and but over. But you can put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> and if someone puts it back in, you may be able to recover that lethal that lethal damage. It is one point of damage. I know. I'm Speaking, just argue with the GM more. Speaking of putting it back in, um, <laughs> around this time, you, like a, a Goron roll just comes out of the comes out of the oh, portal. Come on! <laughs> so as you step through uh, again, you feel those knives all in yeah. your body. Again, you see the colors, and again you see this red and black figure yeah. that's just looking at you. He doesn't say anything this time, but he's looking at you as you pass through this thing and it's very unsettling um and then you pass through the other side and you are 30 feet in the air yeah uh, you see just um, rolling rolling the shika and the zora kind of like strider slide or you know mega man x sliding down the wall <laughs> um you however have <laughs> you are just out there's there's nothing to stop you from falling. Yeah, I'm just like projectile like rolling down thirty feet into the roll into slightly the arcing into the air. <laughs> Where to God. Sure. We're um, Alex, no. Um, uh, God, make me an agility check. <laughs> I have a five in this. Is this gonna be okay? Rolls one. <laughs> 20, ha! Uh, All right, so you're sitting there, you're still on there, uh, on your back, you're checking your accordion to make sure it's okay, and you hear this, <laughs> and this large, rock, boulder-like shape is coming right at you. And you realize this is not going to end well, and so oh. you just roll. Um, and it ends. And uh, Aruna, you kind of travel around uh, because you've you've traveled by rolling before. It's a it's a Goron pastime, like um, riding a bike. Yeah. <laughs> and so you, uh, I totally lost one of my dice too. I'm trying to figure out where it went. If anyone wonders why I keep looking down, um, it's totally about dice. dice. Absolutely. It's, yeah. That's it's. I'm not checking to see if anything else is there. 
it's my it dice, into, I swear. It went into the rip in time. Apparently. Blink dead. Um, so you roll around a little bit and you come back and you see these three other people there. Uh, one of them you can see is kind of rubbing her shoulder. Um, and her shoulder is at a very, very odd angle. Um, and Goron, because they are made of, basically made of rock, um, you don't really have kind of the same skeletal system as other people. So you've never, you've never seen a dislocated joint. Um, all you know is that before her arm bent one way and now her arm bends in a very different way. And she looks like she's in a fair amount of pain. Like the Dickens. Is everybody okay? Hey, why is your arm that way? <laughs> <laughs> because my arm is not okay. Can I can I just pop it back in? Uh yeah, it's easy enough. Can I all right, um, she's gonna she's gonna probably just lay back to use that as a thing of like, hang on. <laughs> a lot of string of shaking. Uh, I am going to uh, I'm gonna have you uh, just make a, a logic roll to see if you can do it on your own. Fair. Um just because that does take a little bit of skill. It does. Uh, I just figured this is probably not the first time Kestrel has done this, given her proclivity for climbing in small spaces and getting into trouble. 28! Yeah, you sit there. Uh, you kind of basically what you do is you go up to the rock face and, and you're in a lot of pain and you're just like, eh, and you slam your <laughs> arm and your shoulder into the, uh, the rock face, realize it's popped the other way, turn around and just <laughs> slam your back into it. And then you feel this very satisfying pop, and you can move your fingers again, and things like that. Um, uh, the lethal damage um, will go away after a couple of hours. Fair. Um, so, so as of right now, you just you're you're one hit point down, but you seem to be safe right now. Um, and that feeling that you had that the world was somehow wrong. Um, is still there, but it's very different. And as you look around, you notice that the grass that was on fire isn't on fire anymore. And as you look at the sky, the sky is kind of a slightly different color blue. Okay, and this is weird. just you feel different. You can't really explain why, you can't really explain how, but something is different. And then you look around and you see a Goron and you see a Rito and you see a Zora and you realize you don't have your goggles on and you're in full display of being a Shika, which is basically illegal. And <laughs> none of them are doing anything about it. Shadowstalkers? What? Down. Um, Elias, you have no... Or uh, Aruna and... Um, uh, Pierre, you have no idea what that is. She just said the word shadow soccer's. It's knows. like she just picked two. She just picked two words <laughs> out of randomness I and put them together. Confusingly say, no. They're gone. <sighs> okay. Can breathe. All right. Is this still Hyrule Field? Yeah. Did uh, did anyone? Else That's a good question. Hear the weird voice about finally? Because I'm I'm still a little weirded out by that. When we step through like the uh, the hole, the air hole. No, I Zolta just moves a little bit away from stabbing. the guy who hears voices. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of stabbing pain. No one. Like, okay. Well. Uh, I in all fairness, I was running away from something, and so I was trying to avoid it. I didn't pay attention to things that were going around me. So sorry. Same? <laughs> Here's a question. I was in the field alone, and then all of you guys just came out of holes in the sky, except for you, who I, like, you make mummies, I think? It, uh, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still thinking about that. So I don't where, know what you're talking about. Where did you guys come from? Uh... That hole, I guess, which is, seems to not be okay. Logically, if I think about this, this is. Did we somehow go through? Do I have any knowledge of possible like alternate universes? Is that any part of lore that I would have come across? Okay, cool. <clears throat> Nothing. Um, 
Yeah. You uh, you know, um, uh, there was a story passed down among your people about um, the uh, place where <laughs> Triforce was kept. Um, uh, when it's uh, corrupted by uh, Ganondorf uh, and he became Ganon, um, that place turned into uh, kind of like a dark mirror of the world. Um, okay. But it was, you know, it was, so, it was. So the, the uh, uh, legends have talked about the sacred realm being kind of a parallel dimension that can change based on that but uh that's the the only thing you would know as far as like legends and things like that and again your understanding was that was a story told to children to get them yeah. to go to sleep at night but at this point so so is a lot of what i know <laughs> yeah um okay um so, but again one point, of the defining you... features of it was the sacred realm when it was with the sacred realm was um everything was beautiful and uh it was it was a stark contrast to the world uh that you uh the, the hyrule that everyone knew and when ganon corrupted it it again became a very stark contrast it was not like the same with minor changes it was an entirely different world <coughs> that had okay. some similarities this looks like you're in the exact same place you were before there's just no fire but clearly no we're not stalkers. Like, you don't feel lots of pain like that when you just walk through a normal door. At least I don't. Well, <laughs> when you're big. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Aruna. Um, so I want to point to um, Pierre and Aruna and be like, did either of you initially come through one of those things? No, I just walked. Uh... I walked up to this field. The, uh, the Rito came out of the sky we had a tumble, and then you came out of the sky and shot my bomb, and then I looked into a new portal and saw the Zora and threw some bombs at some bullies, and then we came back through another <laughs> another hole, and now we're here again. And then you made your arm different. I would appreciate different. not being called the Zora. What's your name? My name is Zolta Kalio. Okay, my I'm name's Aruna. Okay. Um... So there's that. So first of all, introduction since we're going through that, I am Pierre. Uh, to answer your question, miss, um, I was being chased by a guardian, found a random hole, I guess, I don't, and was just like, oh, this seems like a good hiding spot, and dove through it. I thought it was a rock, and then it turned out to be Aruna. Did you say a guardian? As, um, as, um... As he says the word guardian, uh, that piques your interest, um, Kestrel, because you know um, uh, the guardians were Sheik Attack um, that were basically destroyed by the Shadow Stalkers before they started hunting Chica because they ran out of guardians to destroy. Um, you weren't aware of any that worked anymore. And you've never, you've never heard the phrase, I was attacked by a guardian. Like they were destroyed a long time ago. Okay, okay, okay. Did you say uh, a guardian? Yeah you're, yeah, you're aware of guardians, but they've been inactive for years. They 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 haven't done anything for years. Um, okay. People still people still tend to avoid them because they're worried that they're going to wake up again. But you haven't heard of anyone being attacked by a guardian, and you've been wandering all over Hyrule. You haven't yeah. heard of you've walked past guardians. They haven't done anything. Okay. They're broken tech. Well, the one that got me was certainly not broken. <laughs> you, uh, um, according to your understanding, Pierre, um, guardians are uh, <laughs> their um, Rito tech that has been malfunctioning for years and will attack anyone that comes anywhere near them because mm -hmm. they are broken. Rito tech. Yep. So a guardian was you're attacking all kind you? Of, you're all kind of confused by this. But they've been, they 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 haven't been they've been asleep. No, they've been destroyed. No, well, kind yeah. of. They're just sort of like 
dormant. There's there's a few over like this way. I point in some random direction where I've seen a guardian <laughs> skeleton before. Mm. Like nearby? Oh yeah, it's a big field. Like like how cl- C- can you show me? <laughs> And as you guys yes. are all sitting there, <laughs> starting to realize that something bigger is going on here than you originally thought, that is uh, unfortunately where we are going to leave it for tonight. Well, I want to see the uh, thing. <laughs> I would like to Good thank uh, my amazing players, um, Elias Thompson, uh, Hey, Leah, Miriam Pig, uh, Kiri Callaghan, and Alex Rosenberg, you guys have been wonderful. Um, if these guys would like to stalk you on the internets, um, uh, where would they find you? Let's start uh, reverse order. Alex, if they want to, you know, uh, find you on the interwebs, where would they find you? Uh, you can find me on the internet at youtube.com slash Lucas Starks. Uh, Luca underscore Starks on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and Twitch. And you can always find me here at Zelda Universe. I actually stream on Mondays from 6 to 9. It's called the Rosenberg Hour. When his internet works. Hour. Uh, so you can find me all the way with that, and then I do performance stuff. What is it? Uh, and then I have a website, I'll Rosenberg for all my art stuff. So, there you go. Awesome. Uh, Kiri, if, if, if people wanted to, um, we're actually going to come back to you in a second because you have lots of things. Um, so we will come back to you at the very end. Um, I'm going to go to, uh, Ilya, uh, if people want to uh, follow you, maybe find some of the other work that you do, uh, that appears on the internet. Um, uh, where can they, uh, where can they find you? You guys can follow me basically everywhere as Green Eyed Trombonist, except for on Twitter because they don't like that many letters in the character name, uh, as Green Eyed T Bone. And if you want to follow the things that I'm probably best known for right now, are articles on Geek and Sundry, where I take different characters from various fandoms and turn them into playable characters in D&D 5e. That's so cool. awesome. Nice. Um, Elias, as always, uh, very much, I, I think, above a mediocre performance um, from you today. Well, eh. um, um, and for those of you that don't get that reference, um, someday you will. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Elias, maybe. where can people find you? Uh, yeah, I'm at Elias Thompson on most all social media platforms. I uh, direct Twitch here on Zelda they Universe. Call it branding. Yes. Uh, I broadcast here on Zelda Universe Tuesday nights. I broadcast on a Twitch channel called Winecraft Wednesday, Wednesday nights. And I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't do my job as Twitch director and thank the new subscribers and bits that we got during the show and thank especially Hyper RPG and Geek and Sunshine for hosting us. Yay. Dennis, thank you. We love, we, we, we love you both. Um, I, uh, before I give, uh, give it over to Kiri for all the amazing things that she does, um, Hyper RPG has a thing they do once a month called Hyperdrive. Um, once you guys are done here, please head over to Hyper RPG. They do this really awesome thing once a month uh, to help support uh, their channel. Their channel is entirely funded by its fans. They do amazing stuff, and none of it uh, happens at the same time as uh, this show. Um, and so you don't have to um, ever have to choose between watching this amazing show or watching their amazing stuff. So if you have time today, head over to twitch.tv slash hyperrpg and watch their stuff. They have sketch comedy. They have uh, new shows that they try out. This is a once a month thing that they do that's really cool. Um, and they were kind Actually, enough to host for um, us. Jody, because you mentioned the Super Mario movie earlier, they're actually doing a Super Mario RPG today. Oh, they're Check doing a Super out. Mario RPG today. So again, um, they were kind <laughs> enough to host us. Um, if you don't know who Geek and Sundry are, um, I love them to death. Uh, uh, Kiri uh, got uh, her kind of YouTube career kind of started with them. Um, uh, and I, I, I believe she has fond memories of them. I can't speak for her. Um, uh, yeah, they but feel free. Uh, they were they were kind enough to uh, host us, so feel free to check them out as well. They're a phenomenal channel. Uh, they put out uh, they put out content um, five days a week on weekdays. Um, obviously, we we want you watching Zelda Universe as well because we have awesome, amazing stuff that we do here. 
Um, but these people were kind enough to host us, so I might as well at least, you know, let pe- uh, let you guys know that they exist. They, um, a lot of people involved are very wonderful, amazing people, um, and I have connections uh, with both groups um, that go years and years back. Um, <laughs> so now that I'm done saying that, uh, Kiri, if people want to find you on the interwebs or maybe meet you in person and yeah. have some random you know, maybe collection of, of, of words that have been published by an actual real publisher <laughs> signed by you, where might that happen? Um, if you want to find me on the internet, I am very consistent with my brand with Kiri Calligan on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. I think it's actually Kiri S. Calligan. Curious Kelligan. Uh, sorry, <laughs> uses me. Um, and Twitch is just curiosity. Um, I occasionally do streams, less so lately because things have been crazy. But um, if you want to, if you are in the Spokane area, I will be at Fan Nexus next weekend. If you are in the general LA area, I will be having, I will be at Indie Scribe as well as a signing in Glendora, California, and Burbank at the Barnes and Noble. The information is up on both my Facebook and I think it's pinned to my Twitter. If not, I'll retweet it soon. Um, and yeah, come say hi. I've got a book. It's pretty dandy. I like it. Um, and because of that, That's I probably won't be at the next, I won't be at the next uh, Twitch stream, sadly, because I, yes. uh, so I had again, all of my do, stuff scheduled um, <laughs> already. Uh, we do do this every other week, uh, uh, every other <laughs> weekend. Um, same time, same brilliant place. Please follow Zelda. Uh, uh, Universe TV here on Twitch. Uh, feel free to subscribe to help uh, support uh, the staff here doing the amazing stuff that they do. Um, uh, we uh, This show, just this show, has been in production since April. It has taken us since April to get to this point. The people um, uh, that you see here have done amazing, wonderful things that have worked very, very hard to do this. Um, again, my name is Trainer Jody. I'm at Trainer Jody everywhere. I have a YouTube channel. Um, I'm on Twitter, uh, at Trainer Jody. I think I'm on Instagram as well, but I've never actually used it. Um, I just signed up because they wouldn't let me look at some people's pictures without signing up. That's creepy. Um, it is. Uh, <laughs> it, it is. I'm, I'm not going like, to, mm? I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. There are some, some very, very beautiful people that I follow that have Instagram accounts that they will tweet their Instagram pictures. And I'm like, that's really cool. And you're a very beautiful person. And I enjoy looking at your pictures. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. So, Instagram models. Uh, Still may be too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, uh, anyway, and there's like cosplayers and stuff like that that have really amazing stuff. And then people with cats and stuff and I love yeah, that we've made anyway. you yeah. so uncomfortable. You have to Follow justify me on what you've done on Instagram. <laughs> if you uh, want to see pictures um, of cats. <laughs> if, you want, uh, uh, if you want to see more of me running uh, RPGs, uh, on Tuesday nights, I do run uh, my own RPG. Um, I actually, I'm, I'm running two simultaneous campaigns right now. Uh, on one week, I run um, uh, the Tyranny of Dragons campaign, which we're uh, we're ending, and we're going to be starting a new campaign rel- uh, within the next couple months here. And on the other week, I actually run a custom uh, created world called the Kingdom of the Kale Isles. There's uh, we use uh, D and D Fifth Edition, um, so feel free to go over to twitch.tv slash Trainer Jody, um, follow me there, um, and Tuesday nights at either um, eight thirty or nine p.m. Central Time because I live in the frozen north of Wisconsin. <coughs> um, uh, you can uh, uh, you can watch me do more funny voices and you know see me run a different system. So anyway, um, uh, again, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been the first episode of Realms of the Wild. Um, we do want to interact with you guys. Um, we've been lucky enough. We have gotten fan art already, which which thrilled us beyond all belief. Um, if you guys have fan art or uh if you have anything like that feel free to tweet at zelda universe tv that is their twitter account um and uh that information stuff will get directed to the cast and things like that um if uh you guys uh uh, we we want to interact with you we want to um have fun with you guys we want you guys to be a part of the story just as much as these guys are um, so feel free to interact uh, and talk to um, at Zelda Universe TV. If you have specific questions for me, you can um, tweet them at me. Uh, Twitter is the easiest place um, and the most reliable place uh, to contact me. 
Uh, so again, that's at Trainer Jody. Um, and uh, you know, if you have questions about the cast, we uh, there will be certain things that I will tell you flat out. Um, you have to wait and see. There are secrets to this campaign that the players don't know about. There are aspects of everybody's backstory that only they and I know about. Um, so you may ask questions and you'll get cryptic answers or you'll you'll get, you know, things like, well, I, I don't know. Um, you might find that out later. Um, but we do want to interact with you. We do want to hear from you. Oh, nice. um, thank you so much to everybody uh, that donated today. Um, that, that gave us bits, that subscribed. Um, Elias, you don't actually have the ability to bring up a list of donations or anything we could read off really quickly do you donations no i mean the, the the there was alerts in chats and alerts on top of the screen when it happened during the game it was just silent for us okay um well uh, uh thank you everyone to uh uh anyone who subscribed anyone who uh donated anyone who uh supplied bits all of that goes towards helping zelda universe uh, to be able to pay for everything that they do. Um, again, thank you so much for, for tuning in today. Um, and uh, yeah, I will see you guys uh, in two weeks here or uh, on Tuesday uh, on my uh, uh, personal Twitch channel. All right? Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, everybody.